Hey guys, it's Everett. It's Thursday, October 10, 2013, and this week's topic is on sexual urges. But before I start, I just want to remind you guys that it's the last day to buy the Trans Calendar Project calendars. Um, they're $25, and they reached the goal, so they're all going to be sent out, and you should really do it because I bought mine last night and waited to the last minute. But they're going to be super fucking awesome, and You'll be supporting so many trans people when you do it, so you should just really get one if you haven't already. I'm gonna, you know, try and talk about things that people haven't really talked about or haven't focused on in detail. Even though we're talking about sexual urges, that not everybody experiences sexual urges or has sexual desire. Asexual people are still romantic. Can be romantic, don't necessarily have to be. And that's something I wanted to talk about, is the difference between sexual orientation, romantic orientation, and sexual practice. Although these things are commonly associated with sexuality and is seen as one thing by general society, sexual orientation is who you're sexually attracted to. Romantic orientation is who you're romantically attracted to, who you have feelings for. And for a lot of people, these things coincide. So usually you have feelings for somebody and you also develop a sexual attraction for that person. Or you know, But there are people who don't experience a romantic attraction or people who don't experience a sexual attraction but may have the other or may have none or may have both sexual practice which is you know your sexual behavior and this can include like fetishes and stuff how many partners you've been with and just you know what you do sexually um your sexual practice does not define your sexual orientation nor does it ro define your romantic orientation and that's something that society doesn't recognize either because you know You'll hear people saying like, oh, so you're gay now, or oh, you're straight now, after somebody who's normally been with same gender partners and then has an experience with somebody of the opposite gender. Um, you know, the, <laughs> people like to put people in boxes and, and get kind of tripped up when they can't. So people are like, oh, so you're straight now, or oh, so you're gay now, um, rather than, you know, just letting people do whatever the fuck they want. I think there's not a lot of videos on sex, but I personally love talking about sex, and my most popular videos on my personal channel are about sex, so if you want to see my progression through the years talking about sex, that's really awesome to check out on my personal channel, um, but I think a lot of the reason why guys don't talk about sex more is because of general dysphoria, and for a lot of us it is, you know, dysphoric. Sex is something that is dysphoric and until they get to a certain point. And transition and some people never reach that point but get to a certain point where either they're comfortable with themselves or confident or they don't feel that as much or don't have bottom dysphoria or don't have chest dysphoria you know um, so sex with FTMs is, is different for everybody there's no formula there's no surgery to fix everything there's no miracle drug it's you know you you take it as it comes and do the best that you can um, so Although I am talking about sex, and we're all talking about sex on this channel, that's just a few of the perspectives of the FTM community. It's not necessarily representative of everybody in it. So there's, you know, a thing when hormones get in your body, and it's like puberty, and then you have all these sexual urges and sexual drive. Not everybody experiences that. For most of us, yeah, we do, because, you know, when there's hormones rushing through your body, especially testosterone, that's going to cause some, you know, sex drive to increase. Um, and there's a few ways to deal with this. You can ignore it, <laughs> or you can masturbate um, in your own way, whatever feels good for you. I think masturbation is healthy, although I, um, prior to tea, I was so dysphoric that I didn't um, at all, and I just kind of, you know, did my own thing not masturbating, exercising, going to the gym instead. But when you do have sex with somebody, which would be an alternative to masturbation, to, you know, do something about these sexual urges, there's a few things you need to know. First of all, you should be with somebody who's supportive. It's not somebody who's going to put up with your body. And I tried to overcompensate in so many of my relationships because I thought I was flawed and that people, like, I could find somebody who would be okay with my body if I tried to overcompensate with my personality. I would charm people and I would do really nice things for them to get them to fall in love with me and then my body maybe wouldn't be a problem. And that's really not a healthy outlook. <clears throat> so I think when you're with a partner you need to be with somebody who desires you because nobody wants to
to hear that somebody's going to be okay with their body. You know, everybody wants to feel desired. If we were talking about weight, if we switched this to issues of weight, and somebody said, oh yeah, like, you know, you're overweight, somebody would be okay with your body, you know, you could find somebody out there. Who the fuck wants to hear that? You know, everybody wants to hear that they're wanted. Everybody wants to be wanted, wants to be needed, wants to be desired. So I, I just want to stress that point because um, that's something that took me a long time to realize. And I really didn't realize it until I met Shelly that, you know, how bad I, I viewed myself in that way and how negative that is and how, you know, detrimental that is to your self-worth and self-confidence. Um, <clears throat> so when you're having sex with somebody... Obviously, you need open, honest communication, and that involves, you know, speaking out, feeling comfortable enough to speak out, and being receptive enough and open enough for somebody to speak to you without you getting defensive or angry or any sort of negative emotion. Um, you also need to get tested. That's really important. You may have picked something up. You really don't know. Um, you know, people people can say things, and I think it's really, 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 it's imperative that you get tested, and get tested before and after every sexual partner that you have. It's really, really important. I cannot stress that enough, and there's so many STD, STIs going around that you really don't know, and the majority of society has an STI, especially people around our age. So getting tested is really important and I know for a lot of trans people that can be dysphoric but Planned Parenthood is supposed to be somewhere that's you know affordable and with people who are LGBT sensitive affirming um, if not you know you don't necessarily have to see a specialist but your health is really important and even if it's just like a half hour appointment you're uncomfortable or dysphoric just do it and get it out of the way. I promise you, it, your health is so much more important than that half hour of dysphoria. And I know it may not feel like it, but I assure you it is. Please, please, please get tested. Not all testing is invasive, but, you know, there's blood tests and there's urine tests and there's the swab for HIV, but, you know, HPV needs to be an exam. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'm also somebody who's really... Uh, bottom dysphoric when it comes to that, but I've done it, and I, I think that everybody can, and I think it's important. Anyways, so get tested, and use protection. Um, you know, if you haven't gotten tested, I would still use protection, like, don't take that risk, you know, because you can get something for life, and it sticks with you forever, so please, you know, please take that seriously, and you can find for more information on Emery and August's video they made on their personal channel. I'll leave a link down below. I thought it was so informative, and I actually learned some stuff, so thank you. Thank you guys so much for creating that video. Um, <clears throat> consent is also something that's a big deal with sex. You know, you know, no means no, but yes doesn't always mean yes. Sometimes people aren't comfortable expressing that they're not okay with what's happening or it's moving too fast um, and that's something that Emery and August also talked about in their video but a sober consent is always necessary and thrilled sober consent you need that every time you have sex it doesn't matter if you're with somebody you've been in a relationship for years there needs to be that consent there every single time please take that seriously um, with that being said, on my personal channel I talk a bit more about sexual urges and my personal sexual desires and my sort of sexual attraction over the years. So um, being somebody who's in like a non-normative relationship, I think it, it would be interesting for people to watch. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. If I said something wrong or I was incorrect about something, please correct me. Um, and I hope you found this video interesting. It's been a really rough week, and I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm kind of in the same boat as Chase right now. Um, but I, this video is so important to hit home to you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, and I really hope you took something away from this. Um, if you need information, just let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check out the Trans Calendar Project, and I'll see you next week. Bye.